All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 39, the Bent Pyramid Satellite Hydraulic Press. So in today's episode, I will be discussing the function of the Bent Pyramid's Satellite Pyramid, which is that of an hydraulic press mechanism, which controlled the movement of the two stone valves located within the western pump shaft of the Bent Pyramid. So we're going to start today's video with an explanation of the primary pump mechanism located within the Satellite Pyramid itself. We will follow with the discussion on the piston or pressure operated stone valve housing and we will conclude today's episode with an exclusive discovery and revelation of the function of the stop block located at the top of the stone valve channel and ladies and gentlemen the function of this stop block is conclusive evidence of my moving stone valve theory that has been incorporated within the ammonium bicarbonate reaction sequence within the bent pyramid now, ladies and gentlemen, this stone valve housing operates based on Pascal's principle in a very simple mathematical equation. And it is yet another beautiful demonstration of the absolutely brilliant application of the knowledge of basic physics to accomplish miraculous chemical reactions, which I have proposed was the intention behind the engineering of the Egyptian pyramids. To all of the new viewers, Thank you so much for joining us here on the Land of Chem. If you're watching this and you haven't already, please subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever the videos premiere. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. Check out thelandofchem.com for books and merch if you want to help support the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with tonight's episode. So in today's video, I will be discussing the function of the satellite pyramid located on the south side of the bent pyramid. And you can see here the main structure from my 2021 research expedition. And in this diagram, the satellite pyramid is located here at number two. Now notice that this structure was incorporated within the walls of the main reservoir. So this entire reservoir was filled with water that was being introduced into the large pyramid to facilitate the chemical reaction sequence inside of these chambers. And it was also being utilized to operate the satellite hydraulic press mechanism, which you can see here on the south side of the structure. And in this next picture, you can see the remains of what used to be the bent pyramid satellite pyramid. And this is from my 2021 research expedition. This was my second opportunity to investigate inside both of these structures. And here's a quick video from that trip showing the area directly outside of this hydraulic press and the corresponding area on the south side of the main pyramid. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> All right, here we are looking at the satellite pyramid of the bent pyramid. And I'm going to turn back around so you can see the corresponding area on the south side of the main structure. And you can see here that there was an attempt to excavate into this side of the pyramid. Somebody thought it was important enough to look in this particular area. And I happen to agree because I believe that there is a connection between the portcullis valve system in the bent pyramid main pyramid and the satellite pyramid and that's pretty apparent when you look at the area of the excavated tunnel and turning around here looking directly at the entrance or opening to the satellite pyramid all right now let's take a journey inside of this hydraulic press mechanism and i'll point out a few very unusual details and explain how this whole thing works as we move along now I've already shown the salt deposits and the large holes that are located here in the lower pump walls in episode 17, my 2021 research expedition recap covering the bent pyramid of Dashur. So I highly recommend checking that episode out first and then circling back to today's video. Now the first set of pictures will show 
this upper compression vault located here. And on the edges of the tiers in this section, you will find some very, very unusual staining, which I will also show pictures of here in just a moment. Now, the second set of pictures will show the unexcavated lower primary pump shaft that would lead back into the main structure and connect internally to the secondary pump and piston mechanism inside of the main pyramid. This is a picture of that unexcavated primary pump shaft, which is F1 and A1 in your Pascal's principal equation, which we will get to here in just a moment. And this next picture, this is a picture of the upper compression vault that operates in a similar manner to that of a ram pump. And we'll also get to the function of this area here in just a moment. But first, note the accumulation of material that you can see here on the edges of the tiers, which after the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining that I presented in episode 36, I now also believe this to be strontium. And you can see here a close up of a large crystalline mass of accumulated material here, which I will be discussing much further depth in a later video. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what this material truly is yet, so just stay tuned. Now, as we have seen very, very clearly in the red pyramid, also note the curvature of the staining pattern, which you can see here within this compression vault. Now, these staining patterns are an indication of the pressure and fluid dynamics inside of these systems. This pattern literally shows, as we saw in those console demonstrations, how the pressure is distributed inside of these chambers and it indicates the movement of the reactions. And here on the right, this is my face from my 2020 research expedition, my first time to go inside of the satellite pyramid. And I must admit, that the energy inside of each of these pyramids is very, very different. And the quote unquote vibes inside of this satellite structure are very uplifting to say the least. And I was totally pumped to finally get a chance to explore this hydraulic press mechanism in person. And just a quick reminder, that brand new Land of Chem merch is now available at www.thelandofchem.com. There is the all new fifth degree logo, an alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid on a raw image of the Central Pyramid of Giza. Don't forget the OG second degree logo designed by yours truly, a symbol for the Red Pyramid of Dashur featuring molecular ammonia inside of the structure. And of course, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are also now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you wanna help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab a t-shirt, Either way, all of these orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say, thank you. All right, now moving on to how this system works. And you can see here, this is a diagram of this satellite pyramid. Now the external reservoirs were reported to be approximately 11 meters and the satellite pyramid itself was 26 meters high. So the satellite press mechanism would have been completely filled with water with the exception of the compression vault, which was filled with air and engineered with the same converging tiered vault system that we find in the Red Pyramid that was designed to increase pressure. So again, remember that this area of the hydraulic press mechanism is F1 and A1 on your Pascal's equation, which I will show here in just a moment. So as the stone block is driven down this northern pump shaft, the water will rise, into the compression vault and the wave of pressure will be distributed downward into the primary piston shaft, which you can see here on this diagram of a hydraulic press and Pascal's equation, which is F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. So this satellite pyramid system is F1 and A1. And as you can see in this next diagram of the bent pyramid, there is plenty of room to house this secondary pump and piston mechanism inside or underneath the structure. And you can see here in this diagram, again, there is plenty of space for the housing of this secondary mechanism system. So let's keep it simple. If the primary satellite hydraulic press mechanism, which you can see here, can generate 1000 pounds of force and the secondary shaft system is three times larger, it can easily produce 3000 to move either of the two stone valves located inside of the Western pump shaft, which you can see here. Now, 
I haven't seen any estimates on the weight of this particular stone, but they are not that large in comparison to most of the pyramid stones. I would estimate that these stone valves weigh approximately one ton. So it would be absolutely no problem whatsoever for a hydraulic press the size of a massive pyramid to move these tiny little stones, not to mention the additional compression force that is added in that upper vault system. Now, the piston mechanism, which would have been located right here, which you can see in this diagram, would have driven the stone up the channel towards the stop block, which I will get to here in just a moment. And I propose that this would have originally been a metal piston, which has now been removed, and the shaft termination hole has now been filled with concrete and wooden beams inserted into its place. Now, here are two pictures showing the stone valve housing, and here on the left, you can see the circular piston insertion mark that is located on the stone valve itself, and here on the right, you can see the corresponding circular piston shaft termination that has now been filled with concrete. So these two pictures are from the Asita Project Expedition inside of the Bent Pyramid back in 2010. Now at this time, the structure hadn't been officially reopened to the public. It wasn't officially opened until 2020, and that was when I had my first opportunity to get inside of this structure. So you can see here that these are very old wooden beams. And this is reported that these old wooden beams date back to the Napoleonic era. So I wonder who actually originally removed the metal piston from this shaft termination. Never mind that for now, moving right along. So these two old wooden beams have now been removed from inside of the system during the renovation of the structure when it was being reopened to the public. You can see here these pictures from my 2021 research expedition that those old beams have now been replaced with modern wood. And you can see here at the top, this is that circular piston shaft termination that has been very clearly filled in with modern concrete. Now, as with the red pyramid and its methane shaft termination, these are critical components of these structures, which have been intentionally filled in to obscure their true purpose. So as the satellite pyramid hydraulic press mechanism is activated, the force from that system is distributed through this piston, forcing the stone valve to open and pushing the stone up this channel towards the stop block. Now, I am also highly in support of the idea that this entire stone valve system, as with the function of all of the mechanisms and reactions within the Egyptian pyramids, operated automatically being directly controlled by fluctuations of pressure inside of this system. So in this instance, for example, the configuration of this stone valve housing so precisely and geniusly engineered that it opened automatically when the pressure inside of this primary reaction chamber reached a specific level. And when the pressure fell, the valve closed and the primary reaction chamber began to refill automatically. So these structures are that sophisticated and I put absolutely nothing past their capabilities. Not to mention, I haven't even revealed the true function of the tiered vault system. And you can see here that there is a lot of very, very complex engineering that went into this stone valve housing if all it was meant to do was close in one direction, one time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to my closing argument. And at this point, you might be saying, this is impossible. That huge stone did not move. Well, check this out. So here is the channel that is located underneath that stone valve. And you can clearly see that there is a friction reducing coating compound that has been applied to the channel to facilitate the movement of this stone valve. This is the first piece of conclusive evidence that this was indeed a moving component of this structure. Shout out to the Acida Project for getting photos of this friction reducing sealing compound. And last but not least, it is with the absolute greatest pleasure that I can now finally reveal my discovery and the revelation of the function of the stop block, which is located here at the top of the stone valve channel. And ladies and gentlemen, the function of this stop block is exactly what it says it is, to stop the stone block from being pushed too far back up this channel. So the conventional story would tell you that this stone was set into place and held there with these wooden beams, 
with the intention of placing the pharaoh's body inside of the chamber, knocking down the wooden beam, and allowing the stone to slide down the channel in one direction one time, thus sealing the burial chamber forever and never being able to open again. Then I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, why the hell would they engineer a stop block into the valve housing design and go through all of the extra effort of installing this component and carving this out of stone if this valve was only intended to ever move in one direction one time? Well, the answer is no one would, and the engineers that designed this structure certainly did not do this superfluously. Every single piece of these structures was intentional, and there was absolutely nothing superfluous about this structure. This stop block does exactly what it says. And keep in mind, this is the conventional terminology that is used to describe this component. As with the lower chimney, so even the quote-unquote real archaeologists are describing exactly what it is and how it works, but they are just too blind to see what they are looking at. This stop block stopped the stone valve from being pushed too far back up this housing channel, which is by definition literal proof that this was a moving stone valve mechanism with inside the bent pyramid. So regardless of how this system worked, whether it be the proposed mechanical hydraulic press and pump that forced this stone valve open, or the seemingly omniscient potential of the automatic operation of these structures, this is an exclusive discovery and revelation of the function of this stop block. And once again, conclusive evidence of the function of this satellite hydraulic press mechanism and the proof has literally been built into stone. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 39, the Bent Pyramid Satellite Hydraulic Press. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. In the next episode, I'm going to be discussing the connections between the ancient mound builder civilization of North America, the passage chamber structures of Ireland and Europe, and the construction of ancient pyramids. To all of the new subscribers here on the Land of Chem, thank you so much for joining. Again, if you haven't already and you're watching the video, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. If you want to help support the channel, of course, it's www.thelandofchem.com. Grab a book, pick up a t-shirt. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time.